Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be sharing my March and April TBR. For this TBR, I didn't really have a huge overarching theme except that I'm picking up more contemporary reads and I also still have a lot of fantasy reads as well. Let's get on to my mug pick of the month. So what's in this mug is contemporary and romance reads that I've been wanting to read but they've been on my shelf for a while. So let's just... So I have Beach Read here, if you can see that. So that's going to be my contemporary pick of the month, even though I'm reading a bunch of contemporaries. So this is Beach Read by Emily Henry. So I have heard quite a lot about this one when it first came out. Beach Read is following two different authors, one who writes literary fiction and the other who writes best-selling romance novels. And they both find themselves living next to each other in their respective beach houses for the summer and they're both facing writer's block. And with talking to each other, they realize maybe they should switch up their genres and they might fall in love along the way. So I've actually been wanting to read this one for quite a while, but again, I guess I have an aversion to contemporary romances, but I'm excited to get to this one. And continuing on with my contemporary picks of this month, so the first one is going to be Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've mentioned this book quite a few times now and I really want to get to it so I'm putting it into my TBR. And again, I really enjoyed Taylor Jenkins Reid's previous novels, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. Malibu Rising takes over the course of one night and it takes place at an infamous Rivas mansion. The Rivas are a famous family, including Nina, who is a talented surfer and professional supermodel. We have brothers Jay and Hud. One is, again, a renowned surfer, and the other is a famous photographer. And of course, they have their beloved little sister, Kit. At this end of summer party, to be invited means you're part of the exclusive crowd, but with any family, they have their own fair share of problems, and the Rivas are no exception to that. And by the end of the night, the mansion is up in flames. So I'm really, really excited to get to this one. I do have it on audiobook and ebook. So let's hopefully get this one read. So my next contemporary pick of the month is Things You Save in the Fire by Catherine Center. I haven't read from this author before, but I hear that her books are really, really good. And I'm really excited to get this one. So this one is centered around Cassie, who is a female firefighter in a Texas firehouse. But Unfortunately, she has to move to Boston to help her mother. In Boston, the firehouse then that Cassie is working at is quite old-fashioned. It's a bit run down and has old traditions such as hazing. She's the only female firefighter in this new firehouse. Everyone seems to be quite rude to her or dismissive of Casey, but except for one handsome rookie who is friendly towards her, but Cassie doesn't want to risk her career that she worked so hard for. Lately, I have been enjoying contemporaries more and more specifically like adult romance contemporaries. I think I'm just straying away from YA contemporaries because I just don't like reading about high school settings anymore. Um, I'm really not in high school anymore, so I hope this one will be really heartfelt and a fun romance read. So I chose another contemporary romance this month and this is a second in a series and it's called A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. This is the second book in the A League of Extraordinary Women series. So I did read the first book, Bringing Down the Duke, last month in February and I really really enjoyed it. So I wanted to pick up the sequel and see if I will continue enjoying this author's writing. And you can hear my full thoughts on bringing down the Duke next week in my February wrap up. And I'll link that up above once it's uploaded. So this is a historical fiction series and each book focuses on a separate couple. A Rogue of One's Own is centered around Lucy who is an Oxford suffragist, which means a person who's advocating for equal voting rights, especially for women. Lucy and her band of suffragists have finally raised enough funds to take control of a London major publishing house to ultimately use it in a coup against the parliament. However, a rogue from Lucy's past is standing in her way and getting in the way of her goals. They butt heads and Lucy is determined to not allow this man to disrupt her carefully laid out plans, even with the intense romantic tension that is brewing between them. I really hope to enjoy this one as I did with Bringing Down the Duke. Let's see what I think about it in my wrap up. And moving on to my fantasy picks, I chose 
First up, um, Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. Again, this is a little sneak peek into my February wrap-up, but I really did like the writing of, of Elizabeth Lim of the book I read, and I wanted to pick up her debut novel, Spin the Dawn. This is described as Project Runway meets Milan, and I've been hearing about this book so much ever since it's been first released, but again, I never got around to it. Maya dreams of becoming the best tailor in the land but she's a girl. When a royal messenger summons her father, who is also a renowned tailor, but now has failing health to court, Maya takes his place and poses as a boy to compete for the role of the imperial tailor. And in this competition, there is an impossible task. She must sew three magic dresses from the sun, the moon, and the stars. With backstabbing competitors, forbidden romance and magic set place in a Chinese cultural backdrop, I'm quite excited for this one. So this next book I'm going to be talking about is one that's been released in this past week and it is a fantasy standalone and it is Gallant by Victoria Schwab. So this book follows Olivia Pryor who has grown up in a boarding school for girls and that's really the only home she knows and the only piece from her past is her mother's journal but it seems that her mother's writing has descended into madness. A letter arrives inviting Olivia to go to the Gallant Manor, which was the home that she was born in, but once there, people are surprised at her unexpected arrival. There are secrets hidden in Gallant Manor and Olivia is determined to uncover them, but she discovers that there are ghouls, fully solid ghouls throughout the manor and the person who's controlling them is her father. Olivia now must decide if she will take up her namesake of being a prior to protect the world from ghouls or will she join her father to rule over the world? I'm quite excited for this one and it does take place in I think a creepy magical manner which will be a really fun background for the story. My next fantasy book pick is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is another series I've seen a lot of people on booktube talk about and love so I'm really hoping to get series started. Jade City is about two crime syndicate families who control the island of Kekon. On this island, they produce rare magical jade, which grants you superhuman abilities. We're following the Call family, who is known as a Greenbone clan, who has previous generations of jade-wearing warriors that protected the island. But now the island's more modernized and the Call family helps upkeep the island through commerce and construction. But there is brewing tension increasing between the Calls and the rival clan and that might just bring war to the island. I'm looking forward to the intense politics, intergenerational blood feuds, and magical kung fu in this one. My last fantasy book I chose for this TBR is the Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. We follow Ren Scarborough, who is a half British Reaper and a half Japanese Shinigami. Ren has been collecting souls in the streets of London for centuries, but the Reapers despise her, and Ren one day loses control of her Shinigami abilities and she is forced to flee to Japan. Set in 1890s Japan, Ren with her younger brother enters the Japanese underworld to serve the goddess of death. But here, Ren has to prove herself before she is accepted and deemed worthy. So this fantasy sounds like a really good start to a new fantasy duology and I can't wait to read it. Continuing to pursue my goal this year of reading more non-fiction books, I chose The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I chose this one for this TBR because I want to explore of what it means to be living in the present and I think this one will help me out. In conclusion, those were all of my book picks for the months of March and April. I hope you enjoyed watching. Comment down below a book that you are excited to get to this month or in April. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. See you soon!